Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to wrap up our little series on building sites with Hugo by deploying a site that we've built to GitHub pages uh, and look at some of the different options that we've got and different approaches that we can use for that. But before we get started, let's have a look at how you actually build a Hugo site and some of the things that you can do uh, to customize that build process. So uh, over in Visual Studio Code, uh, we've still got our uh, Hugo uh, pages set up on our, our blog. This is where we left it off uh, last time where we created the uh, single post. Uh, what we want to do now is take all of the content that the Hugo uh, generator creates and actually push that up to GitHub. Um, but the way you actually build the Hugo site is uh, it creates all of the HTML and static content in this public directory. So if, for example, I just said Hugo, there's no actual build option. You just basically say Hugo and then just run it. And you can see it goes through and finds any content from your markdown that you've supplied, any tags pages, any category pages, and it generates all that for you. So this is what the server's doing on the fly uh, while you're looking at it on your local host. And you end up with something like this. Uh, you end up with an index.html file, uh, which you can see will be pretty much the same as what we saw on our local host on the, uh, the server a moment ago. And it's done really cool things as well, like created sitemaps and so forth like that, and individual uh, sections for posts and tags and so forth like that as well. So that's the process. You just literally run the Hugo command and it does that for you. Uh, what are some of the options that you can do with that? Well, probably the, the main one that you might want to look at is the uh, minify option. Uh, so if we actually uh, run that, you can see that the uh, output that it gives us is actually uh, all of the HTML, but this time it's actually uh, just put all, all the white spaces removed. So, so just a little bit of a performance enhancement that will uh, remove some of the bandwidth required to actually download the site. Uh, but we know now that we've got all of our content that will uh, enable us to view our site in this public directory. If you were to literally open up this index.html file, you would see all of the blog posts and content that we've already been working on. So the next step really is to get this stuff onto GitHub. So uh, to do that, we're going to actually go and create a new GitHub repository to start off with. So let's go over to GitHub uh, to, and create a new repository. And I'm just going to call this uh, Hugo Demo, keeping uh, with the rest of the uh, name of the project. Let's create that repository now. And when we've got that, uh, what we're going to do is just grab a reference to the uh, repository uh, URL uh, or SSH URL that we want to uh, add this uh, to uh, and then we'll initialize this project as a git uh, repository so we'll just say git init and then we'll say uh, git add everything that in there and then we're going to just say give it a message of setup so that's just first base uh, commit to get everything that we've been working on into repository and then let me just go back to the top of the screen here and then we'll say git remote add origin. So that's our SSH reference uh, to the repository that we just copied. And then we just want to push this all up to main as well. So we'll just say git push upstream origin main. And what we should find when we go back to the uh, GitHub uh, website for this repository is that uh, we've got all of the uh, content that we've just added, uh, including the public directory uh, in the uh, repository that we've just created. So that's all good. Uh, so how do you actually get this to display with GitHub pages? Well, traditionally you can set up a separate branch, it's usually called gh-pages, uh, and then push all of your uh, HTML that you want to display on there uh, to, to be visible on your uh, GitHub profile. Um, but uh, there is a slight, uh, slightly better way. It's a bit of a hack, but I think it uh, makes sense in this example. And that is to use a slightly different directory uh, and just reference um, the content that's already been published. So you can't actually do this uh, with the public directory. Uh, so we need to use a special directory called docs. And you'll see why in a second. So if we go over to settings here in GitHub, and then for your pages for the uh, uh, repository that we've got there. So you can see here we can deploy a page for this repository based on a branch. Uh, there is the option to use actions as well, but we don't need to build anything. We're just going to literally take the content that we've pre-built on the command line a second ago. And then the branch that we want to choose, uh, we'll just go for the main branch. And you can see here it gives you the option of either taking HTML content from the root of the folder, uh, root of the repository, sorry, or the docs folder. I don't know why there's only the two choices. It seems silly that you can't customize it, but that's the way it is at this point in time. So we could 
uh, in our deploy process here. We could, when we've d generated the public uh, content here, we could just copy it all into the root of the folder, uh, root of the repository, sorry, but this would uh, make it a bit messy because you'd have all of these uh, CSS and HTML files all floating around in the uh, root of the repository and you're going to need to remember to do that copy process each time otherwise it won't deploy. So what we can do is uh, when we do our build process we can say uh, if we go back to uh, this command uh, Hugo minify we can just set the destination folder to be docs and you can see there it does exactly the same process but everything that's been put in this public directory is now in the docs folder so uh, can you maybe delete that public folder now? So what we now have is our website live in this docs folder. So if we go back over to GitHub and say we're going to deploy uh, our pages from the docs folder and just save that when it updates. So now every time we push to the main branch, anything in the docs folder will be available on our site. So let's uh, actually push this stuff up uh, with that change. Uh, with for the docs folder here in, in Visual Studio Code. So we're just going to do the same thing again, add, and we'll just set the message as uh, use docs folder. So now if we push, what we should find if we go back over to GitHub, might need a second or so just to register that uh, commit and that push. Okay, so we've got now uh, our URL live on our GitHub profile. Uh, so you can see here it's been put into this uh, subdirectory of uh, Hugo Demo because that's the name of the repository, um, but uh, it should be uh, good to visit. And if we visit it, you can see we've got our Hugo site appearing, uh, but it doesn't appear uh, as you would expect it if you compare it to the uh, uh, home page for the uh, local host server that we've been running you can see obviously the styling is missing and any other static assets would be missing as well and that's because uh, we haven't actually specified to Hugo uh, where this is actually going to live uh, so you'll notice in the console for example uh, that it can't find like the CSS files because it's not referencing them in the right place so that's pretty simple to fix and it's the last uh, piece in the puzzle that we need to uh, do to get our site live so I'm just going to copy the URL of where we've deployed our Hugo site to and then just go all the way down to your config.toml uh, file where we've made some changes in the past before and you can see here the base URL is just set to example.com by default so that's why you can't find anything. So we're going to set the base URL to be our uh, GitHub uh, pages uh, URL that we've just been provided uh, when the site was deployed. So we're going to save that and then we're going to make another final commit here and we're just going to say um, update base oops, URL and then we're going to push that and then once that's deployed uh, we might need a few seconds uh, with caching and so forth like that and for GitHub pages to update uh, but when we go back to the site in a few moments we should find that uh, all of the CSS is now loading so there we go, uh, we've got the site live now with the CSS. I did actually forget a step here, so apologies for that. Um, but essentially you need to build the uh, Hugo files one more time, run that build command and then commit that and push that, uh, which is why I was sitting there waiting for quite a long time for it to update. Uh, but essentially now the CSS is being found, uh, so uh, that's the last step uh, to getting things uh, all up and running on your GitHub pages. Okay, so that's pretty much it for building your Hugo site and a little bit about how to create your own theme for it as well. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this little mini series. I look forward to seeing any of the sites that you've built. So if you have had a go with the, any of uh, the Hugo stuff that we've been looking at, whether it's just making some markdown and uh, writing some blog posts, or if you've had a go at creating a theme, then just drop a link uh, to your blog in the comments below and I'll be sure to have a look at that and check it out. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.